Hi, I'm Jill Fry. I'm a passionate nightscape photographer and I often run lessons in teaching others how to capture those nightscapes and starry skies. But I know a lot of you can't come along to Southwest Victoria in Australia. So I've decided to do a teaching series on how to take those amazing starry night shots. In this first video of the series, I'm going to go through the equipment that you're going to need to be able to take your starry night shots. Now, first up, I do not have any sponsorship whatsoever. So the equipment I have is the equipment that I have selected to be able to do this for myself. So the first thing you're going to need is a sturdy tripod. In this case, I've got a Manfrotto B3. I do have another Manfrotto, which is a beautiful sturdy tripod but it's heavy. It's an old one and it's heavy and it's great for uh, when I'm not going far but if I'm hiking out to specific locations then this Manfrotto B3 is fantastic, light and sturdy. The second thing you're going to need is obviously a camera. So my digital, digital SLR is a Canon 6D and I particularly chose this camera to be able to do my nightscapes. So, but any camera is fine as long as it is a digital SLR and as long as you can detach the lens and you can also change the settings manually on your camera. So when we're now talking about lenses, I prefer a wide angle lens. Although again, you don't need to have any particular lens. This lens is a Samyang and it's a Samyang 14 millimeter. Um, I find it to be an absolutely fantastic lens for nightscapes because I like to go really, really wide. And the reason why I want to go wide is especially when I'm doing my panorama shots, um, I can go basically from landscape right up to the top to capture the top of the Milky Way. And when you're doing those panorama shots, I can get them all in a series of shots rather than having to go up and down. So I love my Samyang. Uh, this is a Samyang. It goes as low as 2.8, f2.8. It's a 14 millimeter and it's a totally manual lens. Now what I mean by that is that it's manual focus, no autofocus, and also your f-stop is on the, on the ring, on the, on the lens. You don't actually change it manually in the, in the camera, you have to change it manually on the lens. Great lens. Okay, a few other things that you're going to need when you go out. Make sure, spare battery, because your batteries get cold and don't last as long. And also spare memory card, because you're going to enjoy being out there, you're probably going to be taking lots of shots. The next thing you're going to need is light. Now, I take three three lights with me. I take my big floodlight, which is a rechargeable floodlight, which I just picked up at the local hardware store. I have a headlight, which goes obviously over your cap, over your head. And the thing that I must say about these is there was a bit of a furphy going around that if you use the red light on it that it wouldn't be seen by other photographers? Yes it can. Any light, no matter what the colour, can be seen in a photographic shot. So don't think that by turning on your red light that you're not disturbing others, you will be. So please just be careful when there's other photographers around not to be showing your lights everywhere and ruining everybody else's shot. The other light that I have is a finger light. And this is ideal because you just pop it on your finger. You can still operate your camera, but you can have a little light to just flick on when you need it. Um, and it is only a little light, and, uh, but it's just perfect in this sort of situation because you've always got a light at hand. Now these little finger lights I just got from the local $2 shop and there were four in a pack 
and it costs two dollars. So they're ideal. One other thing that you're also going to need, especially if it's a cold night, which quite often it is, is you're going to have to heat your camera lens to stop it from fogging up. Now I do that by using these little hand warmers, which I buy on eBay for a dollar. Um, and I think you can get them at the cheap shops as well. Now what you do is you also will need an old sock with the toe cut out. So it's just a tube basically. So what you do with that is you pop the sock over your lens and double it over. So it's nice and snug. Then you take one of the hand warmers, you give it a shake to activate it, and then you just pop it in between the layers of sock. So it's not directly against the camera, but it's in between the layers of sock there, and that will keep your lens nice and warm and stop it from fogging up. Now, the last thing which you need is warm clothing. Don't underestimate this. You really need to have warm woolen socks, warm footwear, make sure you have thermals underneath your jeans. Don't have cotton directly on your skin because it will get cold. Make sure you've got a ski jacket, gloves, scarf, hat. And the reason you're going to need this is because if you're out there taking star shots, it will get cold and you won't enjoy it. If you're warm, you can happily be out there for hours, enjoying the stars and seeing that amazing scenery. So that's the equipment that you need to get started. You don't need a fancy camera, you do need a tripod. Um, but basically, you just need to get out there. In the next video, I'm going to take you through the camera settings that you're going to need to get out there and take your star shots. So stay with me, and if you think there's somebody else that would like to know how to take star shots too, then please make sure you like this video, put a comment below, and share. Thanks for watching.